In the mid-1950s, the Royal Air Force issued operational requirement F-155, calling for British military aircraft manufacturers to propose a high-speed jet interceptor capable of neutralizing high-altitude jet bombers. The threat of nuclear-capable Soviet bombers necessitated a cutting-edge response from the West. This led to the development of several advanced aircraft designs, one of which was the Vickers Tap 559, an unorthodox and ambitious interceptor by Vicker Armstrongs. The Vickers Tap 559 was a striking design, characterized by its canard layout, set back main wings, twin rudders, and a massive twin set air intake. The intake was split vertically to fit two vertically stacked the Havilland Chiron jet engines, similar to the arrangement in the later English Electric Lightning. Additionally, the aircraft featured forward canards and twin rudders mounted on end plates at the tips of the main wings. The TAP 559's unique configuration aimed to deliver exceptional performance. The aircraft was to be powered by two De Havilland Giron PS261 turbojets, each producing 20,000 pounds force, equivalent to 89 kN of thrust. For additional boost power, two De Havilland Spectra Junior rockets were incorporated providing an extra 5,000 pounds of thrust each. This combination was intended to propel the TAP 559 to speeds of Mark 2.5, with a surface ceiling near 60,000 feet and an impressive rate of climb estimated at 51,000 feet per minute. The primary armament of the TAP 559 was to be two air-to-air -air missiles, either the Red Hebe beam riding missiles or the Blue Jay Mark IV heat seekers. These missiles were to be mounted atop the center fuselage, just behind the canards. The aircraft could also be equipped with an advanced airborne interceptor radar system housed in the nose cone, crucial for detecting and engaging enemy bombers at long ranges. The Vickers Type 559 was designed with a length of 68.2 feet, a wingspan of 42 feet, and a height of 15.2 feet. The empty weight of the aircraft was 41,500 pounds, while the maximum takeoff weight was near 30,000 pounds. The fuselage, deep to accommodate the vertical stacked engines, was constructed primarily of aluminum alloy with critical heat-generating components skinned in titanium. The cockpit, situated at the front of the fuselage, behind the nose cone, was designed to seat a crew of two, a pilot and a navigator or a weapon operator, in a side-by-side -side arrangement. The aircraft's undercarriage was fully retractable, with a single wheel nose leg and twin wheel main legs, all of which would retract into the body of the aircraft. Despite its innovative and ambitious design, the Vickers Type 559 never progressed beyond the drawing board. The British Defense Review of 1957 led to the cancellation of the F-155 requirement, which effectively ended the Type 559 project along with other similar interceptor programs. The review marked a shift in British defense policy, focusing on missile technology and less on manned interceptors, thereby sealing the fate of many advanced aircraft concepts of the era. Although the Vickers Type 559 was never built, it remains a fascinating example of mid-20th century aircraft design. The interceptor's unique combination of turbojet and rocket propulsion, advanced missile armament, 
and distinctive airframe configuration reflect the innovative spirit and technological aspiration of the time. The TAP 559 serves as a reminder of the ambitious projects conceived during the Cold War, aimed at countering the ever-evolving threats of a nuclear-capable adversary. <laughs>